So in this video, we're going to talk about the reactions of carbohydrates. Also, we're going to look at the indiol reaction, the primerizations, and uh, and a couple of reactions with with just um, carbohydrates with, with different reagents. Okay. So the first thing in this class, I think you need to know what the structure of glucose is. You need to memorize it. You need to know how to draw glucose and also fructose. Okay. But let's start with glucose. Glucose is actually a six-membered, and we use Fischer projections to, to, to represent the molecule. Okay, so it's an aldehyde, has an aldehyde functional group at the top. Okay. OH tells why an OH here and H there. And it has this primary alcohol at the bottom. So this is the structure of glucose. Now this is called D plus uh, glucose. And the reason why it's plus because it rotates plane polarized light to the right. Now chiral centers, as you can see, there are four chiral centers. We have one, two, three, four. Okay. And they're configured R, S, R, R. Okay. With the alcohols being on the right, would be considered your R. Okay. So we need to know the structure and memorize the structure of glucose, okay? Now, think about it. Your stomach is acidic, okay? And so we, we, we have a lot of acid in our stomach. And so usually when we deal with uh, sugars, uh, we usually are able to digest them and all that stuff. And the reason why, because they're acid also. And so when you actually take sugars in base, it's not good. It actually uh, tears the sugar up. Um, and, so, and, 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 and so that's why your stomach is acidic, okay? And so... The, the idea is, uh, and let's touch on the idea of epimerization. And we're going to see the structure of, of, um, of fructose later on. So let's touch on the, the idea of epimerization. So it so happens that if I take glucose, there's your R, there's your S. There's your R, there's your R, and there's your CH2, OH, okay? So what happens that if I take glucose and I add it in base, so let's use hydroxide. What will happen? Well, let's look at, let's look at the reaction mechanism, okay? Right adjacent to the aldehyde group, I'll have the, 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 the OH will actually come in and deprotonate. So the hydroxide actually come in deprotonate hydrogen. Okay, it will deprotonate hydrogen. This bond will come in and form a double bond. And this, one of these pi electrons will kick off on the oxygen. Okay, and so in that case, we get to a structure that looks like this. We have an O that has a negative charge. We still have our hydrogen. Now we have a double bonded carbon that has the alcohol. And we still have... Uh, The rest of the structure. Yeah, these are a pain in the butt to draw, but that's fine. We still have the rest of the structure. Okay, you notice that we still have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, okay? And so what will happen in the next step? Okay. Well, because we form water in solution, okay, these electrons will come in. Form a double bond, okay, and then water. These pi electrons. So once it forms a double bond, these pi electrons will come in and attack water, okay, and reform hydroxide in solution, okay, and so these are the products that we get. Well, you can see it here. So these are the products that we will get. OH, H, OH, H. These are two R's, so therefore, or S. Okay. So we get this product here. Okay, so we get this product. Plus, we also get the original glucose molecule back. I want you to take a good look at what's the difference between these two here.
Okay, so these are the products that we get. Now, just for naming purposes, this is actually called D-Manos. And uh, obviously we know this is glucose, okay? Now we get a mixture of products. So when we, when we take sugar and we put it in base, that's why we typically don't run sugars in base. We get a mixture of product, we just destroy it. And so this is called a primerization because uh, we have multiple chiral centers in the molecule, but eventually it's only one that actually changed. And if you look at, and actually these are called C2 epimers specifically. Okay. And if you look and carbon two, well, look, okay, here it's configured R, here it's configured it S. And these are the only chiral centers that change in the molecule, just one. Okay. And so that's why we distinguish these and we call these epimers. Okay. So that's the idea of epimerization. Now, let's talk about the ene diol reaction for a minute, okay? And this is where we'll learn the structure of uh, fructose. So, it so happens that if you take glucose again, so this is D-glucose, so if you take glucose, So if you take glucose, okay, so this is glucose. And the idea now becomes that if we take glucose and we add base again, the reaction can go a different pathway. So if we add base, which is O minus, okay, well, to me, it's gonna deprotonate. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. It's gonna deprotonate the, the the hydrogen, okay? And I'm gonna form a double bond here, and these electrons are gonna kick off on the oxygen. So we get that O minus charge there, okay? So we come to a structure that looks like this. There's your O minus. There's still our hydrogen. There's your double bond to one of the oxygen. We still have our uh, to one of the carbon. We still have the alcohol, okay? And then if I go down the chain, we still have uh, the CH2OH here. Okay. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And so we still have our OH here. We still have the OH here. We still have a hydrogen here and an OH here. Okay. And there's, I'm filling in my hydrogen. So we come to the structure that looks like this. I'm sorry, guys. These structures take so long to draw, but bear with me. Okay, so we come to a structure that looks like this. So what is the next step in the mechanism? Well, we form water in solution. And so this is actually going to come and attack water and create a diol. Okay, and so that's why we call it an ene diol reaction. So let me put this up here. This is the ene diol reaction. Okay. And so coming to a structure like this, we come to a structure that looks like this. There's the two alcohols. There's your double bond to the carbon that has that other alcohol. Okay. So if I look at this, there's my CH2OH. There's one, two, three. Okay, so we have our OH here, OH here, H here, OH here, H, H. Okay. So we'll get to a structure that looks like this, and this is the ene diol. Ene stands for the alkene, and there's a, the two alcohols there, which is which is what we call ene diol. <coughs> now, what would happen in the next step? Well, hydroxide will actually come in again. Okay, and this time it's actually gonna uh, it's actually gonna deprotonate. Okay, so it's gonna deprotonate. Okay. So take all the hydrogen and put the electrons on the oxygen. Okay, and we generate a, a negatively charged oxygen. There's a negative charge oxygen. Okay. And we still have what? Three groups with the CH2 OH here. So we still have three groups. So one, two, three. Okay. We still have the OH, OH, H. Uh, OH, H, H. So there's your negative charge. 
okay and then simply the next step these are actually going to come in and form a double bond so electrons and oxygen will come in and form a double bond and we reform the water in solution so this is gonna these pi electrons will come in and attack a hydrogen okay in that case we actually create fructose and so let's look at the structure for fructose it has two hydrogens around this molecule here there's extra hydrogen that we gained Okay, so there's our CH2, there's our OH. Okay, there's our carbon that has the double bonded oxygen now. Okay, so the carbon that has a double bonded oxygen. And then we have CH2 OH back here. And we have one, two, three. Okay, so fructose also happens to be a six membered carb uh, carbon, uh, six membered carbon chain. H, we have the OH here. Okay, and so this is um, D fructose. Okay, so this is fructose, the structure of fructose. Now you can abbreviate this as a CH2. Okay, but but that is a structure of fructose. So we could create a structure of fructose during um, using base catalyzed reaction to get the indiol through the indiol reaction. And we also talked about epimerization. So let's continue with. With the idea of reactions of, of carbohydrates polymerizations and more okay so now let's get into the reactions of of what these are well before i get into the reaction let's let's talk about something here okay and maybe i'll create the reactions in another video so let's talk about a chair conformation of glucose in it for a second okay so we know glucose looks something like this again Here's our CH2OH, and we have what? One, two, three, four. So that gives us six carbons. There's our R, there's our S, there's our R, and there's our R. Okay, it so happens that if we treat glucose with water, okay, if we treat glucose with water, we'll get an extra, we'll actually lose the aldehyde and create an alcohol. And so if I'm looking at this, There's your alcohol, there's your OH, H, there's your H, OH, there's your OH, H, and there's your OH, H, there's your CH2, OH, okay? So we'll create that, now this carbon has there's our CH2OH. So we'll create the alcohol. Okay. Now, this is an equilibrium with the chair conformation. Okay. So this is an equilibrium with the chair conformation. And so if I'm looking at this, well, in the process, we're going to lose one of these hydrogens. Okay. And so let's label this as carbons one, two, three, four, five. And then the oxygen will be your six. This, this oxygen on the right here will be your six. Now we're going to lose a hydrogen on both sides. So if we lose this hydrogen here, we're going to lose the hydrogen and the alcohol also. Okay. And so we're going to draw a bond from the oxygen to the first carbon. Okay. So there's our bond. So this is five and the oxygen is six. And so let's look at the chair conformation. So if I'm drawing the chair conformation for this molecule, There's our oxygen. There's our CH2OH. There's our alcohol. There's another alcohol. There's another alcohol. Okay. Now this is a structure. Okay. So look, the oxygen is six. Okay, and we have one here with the um, with the carbon and the, with the carbon, the extra hydrogen alcohol. Okay, and so this is a structure. Now this is called alpha D plus gluco paranose. Okay, now why is it alpha? This is alpha because the the oxygen on carbon one 
is actually down. Okay. So let's draw the, 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 the other chair conformation of the molecule. Now for this one, this is actually beta D plus glucoperanose. Okay. So notice the difference. And the only difference here is that our oxygen, the, the, the alcohol group now is now in the is going up in the equatorial position. And, and 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 let's think of this. This is actually the most abundant organic molecule on the earth, okay? And the reason why this is, is because cellulose, cellulose is actually a polymer of this molecule here, okay? And, and we know that cellulose, what, we look at plants. Majority of earths are made up of plants. And the reason why we say this is the most abundant molecule, well, I'm always looking at energetics. And we can see that each one of these substituents are in the equatorial position versus here we have some that are drawn in the, in the axial position, okay? And so uh, we need to know the chair conformations of this video. Now, in the next video, I'm going to do the reactions of different molecules, but these are the basics that you should know, okay? And it's the same thing for, um, I could do this with, with D plus fructose, okay? I could do this with D plus fructose also, okay? So if I take fructose, which is looks like this, I take fructose, this is a CH2OH, there's your OH, H, there's your OH, H, there's your HOH. Okay, if I take fructose and I add water, well again, from the alda, from the key, the, the, the carbonyl group, we're gonna, we're gonna generate an alcohol. And so if you wanna draw the chair conformation of this, well, there's your CH2OH. Okay, there's your CH2OH. Uh, this carbon, we have the alcohol. Okay, we're going to lose one of those hydrogens when I draw the bond. So remember, we're going to lose one of those hydrogens when we draw the bond. There's your OH, H. There's your O, H. There's your CH2OH. Okay. And essentially, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna lose the ox. I'm gonna lose the, the the hydrogen off the oxygen. I'm gonna draw my bond to carbon one, where I also lost one of those hydrogens in the process. Okay, so if I look at this, is a five membered ring now. So this is the chair conformation. So it's a five membered ring. Okay. If I look at this, there's our CH2OH. There's your OH. There's your hydrogen. There's your oxygen. There's your hydrogen. There's your oxygen. Okay. In this case, we have the hydrogen going down. We have a CH2 OH going down. Okay. So again, now this is actually D fructofarinose. Okay, and so five men, five men, five men ring. So this is how we kind of get the the chair, the 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 um the Fisher projections into the actual chair conformations themselves.